Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamid Yusuf. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at the Bia Palace. The cabinet congratulated His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa and the people of Bahrain on the 22nd anniversary of the ratification of the National Action Charter. The cabinet commended the kingdom's achievements following the ratification of the National Action Charter, which has contributed to progress and development across all sectors. Following a review of a memorandum submitted by the Government Executive Committee on the fifth edition of the Government Innovative Competition. Fikra. The cabinet noted this year's high participation and directed ministries and government agencies to review the potential benefits of the ideas submitted. The cabinet commended His Majesty the King's directive to provide urgent humanitarian aid to Turkey and Syria following the devastating earthquakes. In this regard, the cabinet noted the efforts made by the Royal Humanitarian Foundation in supervising the provision of aid to Syria and Turkey and commended the Sawa'ad al Ghayb operation carried out by Turkey by a search and rescue team from the BDF's Royal Guard. His Royal Highness directed the reconstitution of the committee representing the government in joint meetings with the legislative authority regarding the restructuring of government subsidies and urged ministers to cooperate with the committee. The cabinet discussed the memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Social Services on five proposed initiatives to increase the employment of Bahraini doctors and improve their skill sets, which was prepared following His Royal Highness's directive, as listed below. Supporting the recruitment of Bahraini doctors in the private sector for a period of three years, providing that their wages are not less than 800 BD. Providing wage in increment to Bahraini doctors currently working in private health institutions whose wages are less than 800 BD for a year. Providing additional incentives to private health institutions where Bahraini doctors and dentists constitute 25% or more of their total workforce. Introducing Ta'heel as a program to train private sector doctors in the government sector while continuing to work in the private sector. And facilitating the financing of educational loans up to 30,000 Bahraini dinars. The cabinet then discussed and approved the following memorandums. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Information and Communication Technology regarding the achievements of digital transformation in 2022. The memorandum revealed the launch of 28 e-services and four digital projects alongside the preparations needed to launch a further 22 e-services and an additional four digital projects. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft decision to amend provisions on the issuance of regulatory requirements for construction in various regions within Bahrain. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding multiple decisions to restructure several committees. And a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Education and Training Quality Authority on the approval of the authority's reports. The Cabinet then took note of ministerial reports regarding the official visit of the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Kazakhstan to Bahrain, the visit of the Minister of Foreign Affairs to Saudi Arabia, the visit of the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications to Saudi Arabia, and the outcomes of the official visits of officials from Bahrain's tourism sector to the UAE. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa received the newly appointed Thai Ambassador to Bahrain, Pia Pax Rishawrin, at Qdaybiya Palace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted the strength of bilateral relations between Bahrain and Thailand, noting the importance for both countries to continue developing joint cooperation to achieve common interest. For his part, the Ambassador expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness, highlighting his commitment and support in furthering Bahrain-Thailand relations. The Ambassador further wished Bahrain continued progress and development. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Malki, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa met with the former Chief Executive Officer of the National Bank of Bahrain, the NBB, Jean Christophe Durand, at Qdaybiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of banks and financial institutions in advancing the kingdom's economic growth and positioning Bahrain as an attractive financial center. He affirmed that the development of the banking and financial sector is crucial to achieving the goals of the kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness commended Durand's efforts 
noticed throughout his tenure as CEO of NBB, as well as his experience and long service in various positions across financial institutions in the kingdom, and wished him success in his future endeavors. Durand expressed thanks for His Royal Highness's commitment to furthering the development of the kingdom's banking and finance sector, and wished the kingdom continued growth and prosperity. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Malki, also attended the meeting. His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, posted a video clip on his Instagram account of the BDF's Royal Guard Search and Rescue Task Force efforts during its humanitarian mission to search for survivors, injured and victims in the earthquake-affected areas in Turkey. The rescue team succeeded in rescuing a woman who had been under the rubble for seven days. The video clip showed the members of the Royal Guard's task force and Amani rescuers while pulling out a woman who had been trapped in the earthquake rubble for seven days. The Royal Guard Search and Rescue Task Force began its humanitarian relief mission in Turkey on Saturday to search for survivors and find the injured and victims from the rubble in the earthquake-affected areas in Turkey upon the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces. The participation of the search and rescue team stems from the principle of presenting the humanitarian initiatives undertaken by Bahrain towards friendly countries and its always benevolent endeavors to stand by the affected and help the afflicted in various countries of the world. The team showed its full readiness to provide the necessary support to the afflicted in Turkey within the search and rescue operations and to carry out such tasks with high morale. The Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh received the Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed Lamsalam in the presence of the first Deputy Speaker of the Shura Council Jamal Fakhro. They affirmed that the legislative authority is inspired by royal directives and visions of His Majesty the King and works to achieve them through the national tasks and responsibilities and legislative authority performs. They expressed pride in the levels reached of cooperation and coordination between the legislative and executive authorities, praising the keenness and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to integrate legislative and executive efforts to sustain the development and prosperity of Bahrain. They praise the efforts made by the members of both councils to modernize the laws and enforce and develop the system of national legislation that supports comprehensive development strategies and plans aimed at achieving the interests of the country and citizens. They also discuss the latest developments and preparations to host the meetings of the 146th Assembly of the IPU and the accompanying meetings, which will be held in Bahrain from March 11th until the 15th. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, participated in the 7th Annual Forum of Public Finance in the Arab countries held in Dubai. The Minister affirmed that investing in human resources is key to further development and spurring economic growth. He stressed the need to build productive eco economies and continue sustained development efforts towards achieving further development and growth in various fields. The Minister said that the forum provides an opportunity to discuss the means to enhance financial sustainability and economic stability, adopt appropriate policies policies to enhance management of public debt, including the development and rationalization of government spending procedures to ensure efficient spending, strengthen public revenue policies, and bolster partnerships with the private sector for the benefit and development of Arab countries.
the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, in the presence of the Central Bank of Bahrain Governor Rashid Al Maraj, met with the UAE Minister of State for Financial Affairs Mohammed Al Hussaini on the sidelines of the seventh annual Arab Fiscal Forum. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa affirmed the deep rooted historical relations between Bahrain and the UAE and the prominent model they represent in cooperation and coordination as a result of the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the UAE President His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The Minister noted the importance of continuing to bolster cooperation to achieve common goals and interests, hailing the UAE's hosting of the forum. During the meeting, the two sides reviewed the means of bolstering financial and economic cooperation for the interests of the two countries and their people. The Kingdom of Bahrain is considered one of the leading models in the state of institutions and the law through its commitment to an advanced method of work and performance and its perseverance in modernizing the state's authorities and institutions, which come as an implementation of the comprehensive development project led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. More in this report. A new stage in establishing democracy and the rule of law was inaugurated by the National Action Charter, which constituted a historic shift for the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and established the national starting point for the state of institutions and law. The National Action Charter translated the vision of His Majesty the King in activating decision-making in terms of separation of powers leading to a comprehensive development that was based on consensus between the various parties through modernizing the legislative and executive systems and developing laws in line with the requirements of the times. Specialized institutions and laws put national action on a correct path, enabling all components of society to harmonize and strengthen interdependence between them, with the aim of cooperation, development, and maintaining social peace, which affirms the gains and achievements made by the National Action Charter at all levels. The state of institutions and law is based on the principles of the separation of powers, justice and equality between people and public rights and duties, and freedom and democracy, which are applied in full transparency in Bahrain, and as a result of that a distinguished era was ushered that strengthened its global position. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa deputized the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Nawaf Al Ma'auda, to attend the high level conference, which was held at the Arab League headquarters in Cairo. The conference was held under the patronage of the Egyptian President, the Jordanian Monarch, the Palestinian President, Mohammed Abbas, and the Arab League Secretary General. The Minister reiterated Bahrain's stance, rejecting any measures aimed at changing the historical and legal status of the holy city of Al Quds and the necessity for preserving its historical, religious, and civilizational identity and supporting the Palestinian people. He stressed Bahrain's unwavering stance and support to the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people in accordance with the resolutions of international legitimacy and the rights to establish their independent state. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, conducted an inspection visit to East Sitra Town and announced that the completion rate of the first stage reached 70%. She noted that the housing units of the first stage will be completed before the end of the year. The Minister affirmed the Ministry's keenness on conducting construction and infrastructure works simultaneously to expedite the delivery of units to citizens according to the scheduled dates. She noted that the completion rate to supply the plots with infrastructure services has reached 15%, adding that these works qualify beneficiaries of the voucher service to immediately begin construction upon receiving them. Tourism Minister Fatma Sarafi chaired the BTEA, and BTEA meeting and stressed success in exceeding the goals which were set within the 2022 strategy. She stressed the importance of harnessing all efforts to achieve more tourism successes during the next stage in order to reach the goals of the economic recovery plan. The 2022 tourism indicators exceeded the targeted performance results set in the tourism strategy 2022-2026. The BTEA CEO Dr. Nasr Qaidi said that inbound tourism in Bahrain has recovered during the year 2022 by 90%, outperforming the international recovery rate, which was estimated by the World Tourism Organization at a rate of 65%. He highlighted BTEA's preparations related to the Gulf Air Formula One Bahrain Grand Prix, which will be held at the Bahrain International Circuit from the 3rd to the 5th of March. He underlined efforts to restore the wedding tourism momentum in Bahrain, highlighting cooperation with partners to host 14 weddings in the first quarter of this year. 
In the presence of Dubai Crown Prince and Chairman of the Executive Council, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports Secretary General Ayman Lam Ayyad, the Youth Minister Rawan Tawfiqi participated in the Arab Meeting for Young Leaders at the World Government Summit in Dubai. Al Ayyad praised the Lama program and affirmed its role in providing solutions and empowerment for the youth. Tawfiqi then highlighted Bahrain's experience at the national program Lama for empowering young, young leaders. She said that the program for youth empowerment began at the World Government Summit summit in Dubai four years ago with a fruitful discussion on how to build Bahraini, Emirati, Gulf and Arab societies based on positivity, faith and hope. The minister then shared a group photo from the first external training camp for Lama program at Expo 2020 Dubai. The Interior Ministry's Tennis Challenger Tournament held at the Public Security Officers Club began under the supervision of the Organization of the Public Security Sports Association with 12 matches within the first qualifying rounds of the tournament. The first day's competition witnessed the victory of the Ukrainian Alexander Brynin, the Norwegian Viktor Durasovic, and the Bulgarian Dinko Denev, while the Australian Anthony Popirin lost against the Turkish Yankee Ariel and the Czech Roman Jibavi was defeated by the Japanese Kaito Yosugi. The organization of the tournament is in line with the kingdom's vision to promote sports tourism in Bahrain. Well, uh, I was initially expecting to play somebody else, but uh, due to retirement, he uh, he got replaced with my opponent today, and uh, I found the conditions a little bit uh, tricky today, a little bit with the wind and uh, stuff like that, but. Uh, uh, I had some tough moments in the second set, but I was able to to get past those, and um, I'm happy. Uh, it's good that I I get a chance to play one more match in the tournament. So let's see, let's see how it is. But I'm happy being here, and it's very very welcoming country. People are nice, organization is fantastic, and uh, it's good to be here. So I try to stay here as long as I can. I mean, uh, it was a special week for me when I was here last time. It was 2021. Uh, I just want to say thank you to also Bahrain Tennis Federation that gave me the white card main draw when I was here last time. So I think I used it very well, that white card. And uh, I played semi-final here. And uh, I had two match points for the final as well. I mean, I couldn't take it, but still, it was a very positive week for me. And uh, it's nice to be here again, you know. So I just finished my match. I won again in the quali. So it's like, like I said, I feel like home, you know. I feel like I'm in home, so it's very good.